so has ma'am already introduced me uh, i am gitanjali vadwa and uh, right now working in a kpr institute in the department of ai and ds and uh, currently i'm pursuing my phd also under the supervision of dr n yuvraj who has completed his post doc from kung park university that is there in south korea so uh, before pursuing let me over view some things like why we have taken this topic like my topic for today is neuromorphic computing but why i have taken it the, there is something behind that topic it's like uh, we both are working for a structural health monitoring systems how we can implement our ai techniques that to in a structural health monitoring system that to with the civil engineering so now also in obviously outside countries are growing but india is also growing in that case we are having many 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 high rise buildings that are having plus 30 storages or 40 storage tall buildings so how we can increase the durability of the structure like how either there is some sampling either there is how wind energy or how wind pressure is affecting our building so those kind of structural durability like how we can increase it so the, in that case we were working like um, we are working ai with the civil engineering part where we are accommodating with structural health monitoring system and now why i have taken this neuromorphic computing when uh, so was there in south korea in that kung park university in that kung park university that university is trying to uh, work on this neuromorphic chips but those chips earlier like now they are working with uh, Are all other things are uh, coming out with the neuromorphic chip with silicon uh, parts like a silicon as a material. But Kung Park University, their searches are working with the tantalum oxide. There we are working on that. So how we can make with the tantalum oxide and how we can make a chip that can be trained in that way that can be accommodated with structural health monitoring system. so that's the only reason we are jumping to the neuromorphic computers and that that's the that's why i have taken this neuromorphic computers as my topic for today so uh, shall i present my screen ma oh uh, yes ma'am i let you know if, if it's visible okay now Oh uh, yes, ma'am. Your screen is visible now. Okay, ma'am. So uh, our today uh, topic is neuromorphic computing. The word itself is saying us like neuro and the morphic. Neuro means like uh, that will be somewhat related to our nervous system. But nervous system in like artificial intelligence is also mimicking the working of our nervous system. then what is why we are saying everywhere it is the word called artificial intelligence artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is kind of like simulation that that works with the human brain that mimics the actions that we are doing with our brains like our neurons will interact with each other that's the same functionality our we want to our system to be performed that's why we are you saying these everything are as a artificial intelligence and these fields are also get inside and they have also splitted some parts like machine learning and then the deeper as the deep learning so we all are working right now all computer based things are working on machine learnings and deep learnings why we because we want a system to be trained in such a way like that can be uh, give you an uh, output the way we want the way we are training it and uh, expecting the same as in outputs then what why we are making this neuromorphic computing so like there are some traditional uh, right now we are working with some traditional computing where we have some limits for the implementations where we are struggling for the implementations like obviously we have some programs and that programs can be run and but at the same time our computer also our uh, like our system have some threshold and that need to be passed but how can we pass the system by using just the software we need some hardware enhancement also even if we don't have an hardware as my enhancement what can be done either our system will crash or 
sometimes our software will stop working because it needs some supervision it needs some super pass we will say it's a super pass but our system is not having it our cpu is not that much capable of handling few types of our neural uh, few types of algorithms or we say few types of software programs that we want to run so for that we need some enhanced chips we need some enhanced computer systems there we can implement our complete neural network systems and if we say ann ann is artificial neural network that is also a neural network but either ann is ann we say it is a just just like a software but why can't we make we are why can't we jump into a computer system where our hardware can be neural uh, hardware can be based on our neural systems so neural computing system like neuromorphic computing system refers to those designs of computers that are based basically on our nervous system that can be they, that are based on our hardware systems that are integrated circuits we can make those as a chips like for example if we say about uh, selfless driving cars we are not having a computer system in that car and there we are not running the program that complete knowledge that complete models we are converted into chips that is in specialized integrated chips even for face recognition and we are not in uh, complete giving completely giving the program to the camera no we are just installing the chips in the same way this neuromorphic uh, the, this neuromorphic chips what we can say is this neuromorphic chips can be converted into a smaller chips that can be trained in that way that it can be converted into a hardware system so that we can uh, we can implement our softwares very smoothly earlier it was like if we talk about uh, 4g's and 5g's that were just a theoretical parts they were the next generation but now we have already obtained all those things now we are jumping to the next generation systems those systems previously m1 chips and m2 chips they were the next generation systems we were about to obtain it now they are commercialized everyone nowadays is using m1 chip and m2 chips all the mac systems are having m1 chips and now they have already published m2 chips also so they are already next so in the same way we need some ad advanced versions of chips where we can step into the neural complete neural network systems there we need not to wait either when our system will be programming if we are programming with the high softwares or if we are programming with the high technology either our system will respond in that way although we have supercomputers uh, do we have a facility of supercomputers everywhere if we design a complete software uh, like neuromorphic neuromorphic type of a chip if we design some kind of a small chip then it will be very easy that can be handy like we can we cannot take our supercomputers from here to there they are not mobilized but now if we have if we design a chip then it will be mobilized that then, then it will be uh, easy for us to take care of it as well as to carry it anywhere we want even though we can use supercomputers but why can't we go for some enhanced versions and why can't we go for some these kind of things but the basic uh, concept about neuromorphic computer is they work like a spiking neural network this is also a new trend nowadays it's like spiking neural network it works like an artificial neural network but it is not an artificial neural network because it is a type of artificial neural network in spiking we are working with the spikes spikes how the spikes can be generated how the spikes works spikes are nothing but they are just a defined events like in our brain also if we want to memorize something or if we want to recognize something we will call we will uh, if i met someone if there is some incidents happened i will definitely remember it because that incidents can be converted into an event so learning can be enhanced by using rather than uh, having a continuous data in the form of time series data or some different kind of tabular data image data but if we train the system in the form where we are using some events that events can be are though those events are be uh, we call it as spikes because they are also in a, a series way 
but we usually call those series as the spike trains so we will be training our neural network with the spiking data that that is also a mimic the, that can also mimic our uh, neural networks that that mimics the natural neural network see if we say artificial neural network and a natural neural network natural neural network works same as our human brains whatever we say that the thinking ability that we are having not if we are we are not talking about the system the ability that we are having the same way it will perform if if we are able to recognize something see if we see if we see the data if we see the image if we see a person for a kid also if we want to uh, make him memorize something what we will say if we keep on speaking it will not be uh, okay for him he will not rep- uh, recognize it for very much time he will not memorize it for the very much long time but if we show him some video or if we show him some images it will convert it into an event and it will create a picture in his mind like okay this is this in the same way uh, the same way our natural neural network works with the events the same way we want to train the system by using spikes the spikes are are events we are training we are giving some events in a spiking ways to the neural network and it will give you an output also in the spiking way that to in a events form so this is the basic concept why we are jumping into neuromorphic system neuromorphic system will work on the basis of this complete spiking neural networks they are they will not be mimicking uh, they will not be mimicking our artificial neural network they will be mimicking our natural neural network so so this will work for our spiking neural networks that's why we are continuously focusing on our this computing kind of system where it will enhance the speed of learning as well as it will enhance the speed of output so that it can be balanced and it can produce a high amount of output with the very less trained amount even though for uh, some programming language uh, for some algorithms that we have for our ml or our dl we need a huge amount of data set we actually need a huge amount of data set even though if we are not having that much amount of uh, data set what we are doing we are doing data augmentation either by using gan tabular or by using image data we are using some generative algorithms so that we can increase the amount of our data set but but we had have now we are having that kind of neural network that can be trained with the less amount of data and then it can retrain itself by using that amount of data again and again with the new enhancements so uh, if we say like why we are converting why we are having this kind of chips like to to replace the conventional compute uh, computation chips if i say earlier now also we are using some kind of those systems that can only work with zero and one they are following a same pattern from the initial time from the traditional period we are saying it is zero and one yes or no either there is any other option no the data flows in the form of zero or one every time we are working with the zero or one why can't we enhance uh, why can't we have an extensive version where we are having rather than zero and one we are having many other options to train our system so that our uh, to train our system as well as to work with like how many times there is some threshold that we need to pass that threshold is at what ex- extended time we can work with either with the zero and one we need some intelligent system rather than zero and one we can enhance and we can jump into the another versions also rather than zero and one we can learn with the different different abilities and different different existing systems like existing events we can say um, there are many other options to be learned so to overcome that traditional way we are uh, that this kind of computing system has been organ, uh, introduced in the way I, we can say it as a neuromorphic systems where it can work easily with the deep learning as well as machine learning all other stuffs with the artificial intelligence like what uh, why why we need this neuromorphic computing why what was the actual need like for the existing ai systems these are the limitations 
there is no creativity no creativity here i want to mention no creativity means i have trained a model with 1000 data set and i have trained him with the 1000 ones but what if there was some other some other uh, uh, possibilities came will my model will be able to train himself like with this new uh, new technique or with this new data that i have uh, introduced to that complete system no whatever we will be training to our system he will be capable of learning that alone there is no creativity no creativity here is like if i'm training with him uh, with the the tra- if i'm training a model with the complete fruits fruits data set get like a very small example fruits data set if i'm training the system with the fruit data set will it be able to ca- will it that system will be capable of recognizing my vegetables no because we have not trained it in that way but why can't we introduce something why can't we make something that is capable of learning himself like okay this is this why can't we make something like that that is the major advantage of neuromorphic system they can uh, learn their own they can they are capable of uh, they are capable of learning on their own next is transfer learning and next is a physical dimension and energy consumption uh, if i say energy consumption when we are using our uh, when we are using that software as a neural networks what is the drawbacks our system will get heat up it needs a high amount of energy consumption high amount of uh, systems that that can be capable of handling those kind of system but what if we are making a system that is capable of running all kind of machine learning systems with the low amount of consumption if i talk about like why we have introduced this the main reason was firstly we want to make a system where our we can the, the the system that can mimic our human brain human brain with the natural neural networks where one one neural network one neuron can be communicate can communicate with an another neuron one neuron is communicating with an another neuron how in our brain they are doing it but how a message can be transferred from one neuron to another neuron within this computing chip how a synapse one synapse can c- connect with each other how they can send the data how one ion can be there and uh, based on those we need a very few amount of electricity to map those all ions and all those messages that one neuron is passing to the another neuron we need but we need the, obviously the one neuron will be carrying a thousand amount of data one neuron is having thousand amount of information and one neuron if we are transferring one neuron is transferring an information from one neuron to another neuron in the form of some ions and some signals that that need to be mapped in such a way like they should be having some some gradient or some efficient amount of electricity they it should not be like a complete magnetic electricity where the neuron can get collapse we need a very small amount of electricity so that they can map in a complete direction from one synapse to another synapse the the space that can be there from one neuron to another so we need that specified amount of electricity to be passed from one to another so for that we obviously if a one neuron of one cell is having that much amount of information we need either a low amount of consumption or a high amount of consumption that because it is having a complete gradient amount of information so for that we need a very precise amount of electricity and for that for to carry on with this complete amount of uh, information and to to handle this complete structure what we are saying so we need a new materials also we can't work with the same material that we are working for cpu chips or gpu chips no we can't work with the same amount same material that material should be differs if we are working with the same material how it can be possible then it will be working like the same thing that is already being existing we need some enhanced versions also because if we are passing a high electricity that that should not affect the amount of, that should not affect the chip 
so that's why we are that's why the researchers are working with different different kinds of materials also like a single crystalline silicons crystalline silicons with the double crystalline silicons and uh, as i already told like kung park university in south korea they are working with the tantalum oxide tantalum oxide they, they are working with that because that can, can that can adapt a high electricity without affecting to the internal processing so that's what they are working right now need of neuromorphic system to integrate memory and computing in uh, uh, right now also and there is some an architecture that we all know it's a <coughs> this is von man neural network uh, no sorry van neumann architecture but from this architecture we are jumping to the neuromorphic architecture in and the traditional architecture there we are having memory as a separate uh, uh, unit and the computing system as a separate unit like we are having memory system as a different system and the cpu as a different system but now we want memory and computing system to be together so that that learning ability can also increase and the computation ability should also map up with our learning ability that's what we want uh, that would we want in our system so that the memory and the computation both can be increased as well as the functionality will also get improved and another why we need is for removing external dependencies like buses in cpu we depends on buses but in this we are we will be removing this external dependencies and better power utilization uh, we are saying this as a better power utilization because they need less power these chips will be working with the less power systems so they will they are working with less power so mem uh, memory utilization will be decreased the external dependency will also get reduced as well as another is uh, power utilization will be better like they need a less electricity consumption there are uh, this is a differentiation between how one system uh, like our traditional system as well as how neuromorphic architecture what is the major difference between them and how they works like for cpu and the memory if we talk about a traditional one so in that architecture we are having cpu and the memory as a separate separate things where if we need some some changes in the memory or we need some changes in cpu they both don't depend on each other they are different parts where they are very much different but here but in traditional we are working with the binary as an input and binary as an output here if we feed some binary input cpu will work it will go to cpu and then it will interact with the memory and it will in introduce you an output that to within the form of zero and one that is either yes or no it's in a binary form but where we talk about neuromorphic architecture they works on neural network so they works with neuron and synapses for both processing as well as for memory in this systems cpu as well as memory they both are different in previous one they both are very much different from each other they work separately and they work with the very uh, precise way like whatever the work has been given to cpu cpu will perform whatever the the, the thing that is there for memory they both are very separate but here if we say the processing and the computation as well as the memory part will be joined together so that our learning can also get increased as well as our computation can also be increased but here the input will be in the form of spike spike as an input and spike as an output spike inputs that i already explained spikes are are not other than our events the way if we say our egg test for our brain they will also give you a report in the form of spikes egg reports for our brains so they give you the, the out they, they give you a reports with the a spike those are the waves that can be formed within our brain those are the discrete events we used to say those as a discrete events either a data can be in the form of discrete or continuous the waves will be in the continuous but we used to say them as these are our discrete spikes that are discrete events 
we will be training our model with the, this spike input as a discrete events and expecting the output as same as the same output in the form of uh, in the form of our complete discrete events now what are all the major differences major differences are operations like they will perform uh, in the form of sequential processing but they are massively pro uh, parallel processing like they will work parallelly they will not work in the form of sequential way but they are working parallelly another is our organization there are separate computation and memory they works with the separated computation and the memory space but here in this our uh, new architecture it is collaborated the processing as well as memory are collaborated and they will be working together next is our programming the code of instructions for our previous or our uh, traditional way is in the form of code as binary but here in the form of spiking neural networks they will communicate in the form of binary data even though uh, the binary data has a less options to learn but similarly they will be communicating with the form of spikes because they have a very uh, flexible amount of data they are not stuck to the previous one like one and zero because we are making it as a flexible so that the flexible kind of data that can be formed another is the timing they are clockwise they are event wise they are so, like a clock uh, clockwise that could be data driven but if we say data driven and event driven they are based on event driven so this is the basic difference between the architectures like what are, what was the traditional architecture that right now we were working with and now what and all the enhancements are there for a neuromorphic architecture where we are jumping into some uh, advanced versions of each and everything because right now also we are working in a advanced versions of ai earlier it was a kind of a baby that cannot learn on their own we need to train them in such a way that we have to spoon feed each and everything but now that ai baby has been grown so it has to have some that kind of ability that can have some self learning part so to enhance the versions to enhance and jumping into an another phase we are trying to op these kinds of architectures that can be there as a specialized way because everything right now is in a specialization no one is talking about traditional computer science also see we all are passed from computer science we are passed on with the computer science thing but right now we are jumping into each and every specializations then why can't our the systems also it should jump into our physical models should also jump in some physical enhancement some physical specialization where the special system can work with some special kind of abilities alone rather than working with the same amount of traditional things then we can jump into an enhanced version where each and every part can be in a specialized way like we can make that kind of uh, integrated specialized chips that can be installed for each and every precise work so rather than making those kind of single single chips we can train a model we can make a single chip that can work for all the neural networks that can work with all the different kinds of algorithm very smoothly what are all the basic features of this and your morphic computing so first is our rapid response we are saying this as a rapid response because they will give the output in a very mess very less amount of time what if like even if we want to run our deep learning if we are having a data set approximately of 3 gb or 4 gb when we want to run our epochs it is taking very much time so because Our our system is having that as a software alone, but our CPU is already traditional. That is traditional. That is not that much enhanced. But you can see the difference of computation if you are working on a simple, simple like Intel chips, as if you are working with some M1 chips. M1 chip or M2 chip. Uh, I have worked seriously. I have worked. I have experienced. I was working for some. Uh, cancer detection algorithm that time when i was running it on my, 
my uh, intel i7 it was not performing that much it my epochs were getting late and my data was also like i wasn't able to train my model for the whole day it was taking that much extreme time because the data set was of 3 gb but now then after that i have done the same with my m1 chip then it performed very fast but what can be there there is an enhanced version for m1 chip that can only be trained for working with the neural networks even m1 is not that much trained that can work with the neural networks alone it has to work with everything it, it has to work in a sequential manner also so those m1s are also not that much trained what if we can have something that can be trained in that way like it will be having a very much enhanced outputs that can give you a responses very frequently and very fastly so it it is the base it is the main feature we can say it as a rapid response system for completely ai neural networks ai based systems and ai based software algorithms next is low consumption of power that i previously told it needs a less amount of power if we provide a high amount of power then the neurons will get burst so we it needs less power consumption so that is also an, another basic uh, feature we can say like it gives you a rapid response by carrying a huge amount of data by carrying a we can say gradient amount of understanding it will provide you a huge amount of data it is carrying a huge amount of data and mean same in the same way they will give you a response also with a very frequent and a very less time similarly it needs a very less amount of power consumption because if we provide a maximum amount of if we provide a high high voltage of electricity it will get burst so and power consumption because the training speed if the training speed is high the training model will get trained very fastly and the power consumption will also be very low higher adaptability it can be adapted anywhere adaptability if i say why we are saying this as a higher adaptability because it can it has the ability to work with each and every algorithm whatever neural network algorithm whatever machine learning deep learning and all other systems that we want that all other algorithms and the software or the programs that we want in our complete neural network architecture that can be there we can train the system with the different different kinds of data set so that it can learn itself and it can adapt with each and every kind of data fast paced learning like every time we are saying learning 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 why it is learning why we are feeding the data so that we can get the output very frequently so if it is having a rapid response time so in the same way it is having a fast paced learning it is learning with a small amount of data it is learning with a small amount of data and it also has a complete architecture where it is learning on its own learning on its own with the help of a small amount of data and if if other data sets or if some another inputs are coming they are learning with that amount of data also so it is having a high paced learning amount too then next is our mobile architecture we are having this mobile architecture why we are having we are saying this is a mobile architecture because it it is very handy too so like it is not it is not working in the same traditional way the way all cpu and gpus are working it is not working it is it is a enhanced enhanced version so they have the mobile architecture where we can change the things according to us we can change the abilities we can change the functionality based on the requirement that we need so right now it is these are all the features that we have for our neuromorphic computing network so neuromorphic computing and artificial intelligence <coughs> artificial intelligence like it, it we work with this artificial intelligence everyone is in the form of uh, like how we can enhance each and everything so to adapt uh, to adapt it with each and every work like now a days artificial intelligence is there completely with our medical science 
we are working ai in medical science ai in computer science obviously it is there with our computer science engineering similarly ai is there for civil engineering ai is there for structural engineering and uh, even though we are working with the mechanical engineering and chemical engineering right now in my uh, my research part i am working with the civil structural monitoring system so it is based on system so day by day this ai is increasing so it is uh, it is just putting it it is just putting her his or her feet in each and every field so rather than jumping into each and every field we can train a system we can make some some computers in that a way that everyone can use so these this is the basic computing thing that is there for our neuromorphic systems where everything is there based on neural networks but rather than mimicking uh, artificial neural network it will be working same as a natural neural network where there is no uh, where there is uh, where there will be a synapses where there will be trained with the events with the discrete data uh so that was all about what i want to say about neuromorphic computers like uh, let's have some session like where anyone can ask uh, why we have done this like any doubts okay uh, so participant uh, you can please unmute and ask if you have any queries Uh, so we had one other speaker earlier who was Dr. Uh, Yuvraj, and who even told us his various funding projects that he has been doing in uh, South Korea. Uh, so he he gave us a very detailed explanation of how he was been working with drone and lot much details. So yes, ma'am is um, actually yeah. Uh, so ma'am is actually. He is my supervisor. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so she uh, like this session is like almost like a continuation to that, which gave much more details. So, if you had yes, any uh, queries, you can please uh, ask, ma'am. anything like uh, how we are working how we are getting the data for our tall buildings how wind energy is affecting what is structural health monitoring system and why we are uh, jumping into this neuromorphic chip so that we can install this chip with our structural health monitoring system I, even that project is there uh, basically for uh, so like that university that they are also working on these things we are also working with the same amount of networking systems how we can enhance we are working with the different different kinds of algorithms so that that can be increased we can increase the accuracy for their structural health monitoring system that they are working using that they are using previously Okay. Okay. I think uh, uh, as you have already gave an explanation of all that, I think there isn't much questions in this session because that session we had very active questions and all. So yes, your professor already gave so much details such a way that no one is going to ask you questions here. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. That was a very excellent session, I would say. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Again.